Recording in progress. What's going on, everybody? Gotta get this all going here. Hopefully he'll he'll come on here and see that anyway. Hopefully, because if not, I'll have him come back on at six. We'll do it. We'll do the guess for six o'clock. Let's see. All right. Let's. Uh, going on everybody we're just getting things ready for the live stream here that we're going to be doing here pretty soon all right we're supposed to be doing something with max mcneely here today uh he's our going to be our guest We'll see. Hopefully, he, hopefully he didn't forget. They did say two p.m. our time, so that's coming up here a little bit here, about five minutes. So we'll see what happens. Because if you can't come on now, we'll, we'll try to do it more towards the show time then. Can we do the season two finale? Going on, everybody. If you're tuned in here, we're just getting things all ready for the exclusive interview here. I hope he uh, didn't forget. I don't have a way to get a hold of him either. If he if he did, other than do the uh, page here, we'll see what happens here. Oh, hey, that's what it is. Hey. I was already made it already. Hey, what's up, Max? Hey, what's going on, Sean? Yeah, not much. Uh, you made it right on time. I wasn't sure if you were if you remember it or not. <laughs> oh, I heard. I just got the link and got everything going. So. Oh, that's 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 great. That's great. I just want to. I'm just uh, just getting a couple things set up here real quick because uh, I was doing I was uh, trying to promote the uh, and share the uh, the link and everything so I, I I didn't know for sure how long it'd take you to see the link or whatever. 
No, it popped right up, so I hopped on. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I like the I like the effort anyway. Hold on here. So let me just uh, add. I'm just gonna share the link with uh, a couple people real quick, and then we'll we'll get going here. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Oh, let's see here. Hmm. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, to let me interview you because uh, you know it's it's uh, it's very interesting because it's like uh, your your story alone is is interesting enough. You know, even even with your dad and. And everything that you guys uh, built together, and now you take it over. I was really surprised to find out that your father even passed away. I had no had no clue or no knowledge about it at all. I'm telling yeah, you, it, it was pretty unexpected to say the least. Yeah, I would say so. Have you been coping pretty good like, since since then? Yeah, now I'm know? staying pretty, keeping everything running here, the nine to five, and I got a bunch of good productions lined up for the rest of this year so i'm staying busy oh that's 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 good that's good all right well we'll get things started here and uh we are live on facebook just so you know because I, I like to stream all my interviews that that i do uh, so hopefully you don't mind that at all just to get the word out and just to share your story and and and, and chat with you and everything and and then hopefully your audience will will like what, what we see or what they see anyway What's up, everybody? This is Frankie Slauson, and welcome to a special Renegade Radio exclusive interview uh, here today on this fine May 20th, Monday, May 20th, 2024, at 3 o'clock p.m. here. We got uh, a guy who I, I've never chatted with before, but I did chat with his father uh, many years ago when I was uh, did a, a radio uh, I had my own radio station, as most of you guys know, in Rapid City, South Dakota, and... I we used to work at a place called Black Hills Fox TV, and sometimes when there wasn't a whole lot of stuff airing during the day, we would use this guy's show or is it this guy's dad's show as a filler, you know, to to fill airtime. And uh, it's a popular show called The Outdoorsman. It used to be hosted by Buck McNeely, but now it is uh, hosted by his son Max McNeely. Max, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, Sean, thanks for having me, man. Oh, I'm 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 really honored to to have you because you're 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 not only just uh uh it seems like an interesting interesting person, but you feel I I feel like you're kind of like somebody who uh this is what you're doing right now or taking over it isn't because of of uh, because you you're taking over because of conflicts or whatever you're taking over because your dad passed away earlier this uh, year uh at the start of the year anyway and. Uh, I suppose that was uh, not something you anticipated to, start, to kick out the new year, I, I would think. No, definitely not. It came as a shock to everyone, including myself, of course. I thought we had at least another 15, 20 years of adventures with me and my dad, but it happened sometimes, unfortunately. You know, it was always the plan for me to take over. It just came a lot more sooner than we expected. Now, was he... Did he show any signs of uh, being ill at all prior to that happening? Um, nothing out of the ordinary. You know, he was slowing down a little bit as he got older. And, you know, that was just kind of normal with age, as I thought. And uh, he was a type 2 diabetic, so I'm, I know that played a hand in it. And okay. now it, it just kind of came out of nowhere for all of us. None of us saw anything obvious or anything like that. Okay. Oh, that's 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 interesting because I – you know, I, I just, uh, you know, when things like this happen, it's like you can never, you can never be prepared for, for anything like this. You know, it's just like when it happens, it happens. But I'm sure you've gotten a lot of great support from his fans and then your family and everything. And, you know, while you're going through this, because you're still in the coping phase, even though it's been a few months, you can't ever get over something like that. No, it still doesn't feel real, to be honest with you. I still half-ass expect him to walk through the door sometimes, but... Now, we've gotten a lot of great support, family and friends, obviously, and then the fans from all over the world have been pouring in tributes and heartfelt messages, and it's been greatly appreciated. Oh, that's that's good. That's good. Well, that, that's, that just means that your fans really care, you know. And your dad left a, a legacy on, you know, being – what do you say he's like one of the – would you say maybe the, one of the pioneers of, of the outdoors – type of show because didn't he start doing a show like back in the like early to mid 80s or something around 85 that? he launched the show he started it as a college project actually and sold it or 
got it airing on the local Fox station in town there. And from then it's just grown into over 500 stations. It's the largest syndicated outdoor show in the business. So a pioneer, a trailblazer, one of the, one of the other, he, he definitely made his mark. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I figured so because, uh, you know, watching some of the shows that I watched from my Black or Black Hills Fox days, I mean, it was always a hodgepodge of, you know, some sometimes they show current episodes, sometimes they show like older episodes that you thought were current, and they were like from like ninety five or whatever. I mean, it's like your dad just must have, you know, from being a world traveler. Uh, I I gotta say, he 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 saw a lot of things. I got to uh, experience a lot of great uh, crazy adventures. I. And uh, I'm sure when he uh, eventually brought you along uh, for for your your guys' uh, adventures, you didn't know what to uh, anticipate. No, he he definitely saw he saw more things than most people ever see in their whole lifetime, and including the past 15 years where I've been his co-star and right hand man, I've gotten to experience and see so many amazing things, and it's it's been a blessing for sure. Oh, that's good. That's good. No, and and, that, and that's what I mean. And uh, it's like you know, you have all these memories and stuff. And what were some of your like? Do you remember the first uh, gig you did with your your father, or the first time he took you out on a, on a hunting adventure or whatever that you guys filmed? Well, as far as a kid, he would sprinkle me in some stuff every now and then, more domestic stuff, closer closer to home. Like I remember when I was nine years old, I want to say we went fishing. Uh, in the St. Louis area with Kurt Warner of the St. Louis Rams, who had just won the Super Bowl and MVP and all that. That was like a rock star, man. So that was that was definitely pretty cool. Still one of my favorite memories. And my first actual on-job site, we went to South Africa. So that was quite quite an excursion. And South Africa, or Africa in general, is still one of my favorite places to visit. And it was always his, too. Yeah, I've never been, I've never been outside the... Well, I've been to like Canada a little bit because I live in Minnesota and whatnot, but I've never, I've never explored as much as you have. I mean, holy crap, you know, I'm sure different world compared to the good old US of A, I would say, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's places around outside of the US, it's a whole nother experience. But I, I love that about traveling. You get to experience the local people, drink the local drink, eat the local food, just kind of learn their customs. But, as much as I love exploring and checking out all the all these other places, it's always good to get home back to the good old U.S. How long would it normally take for you guys to film like a, a series, or like if you were, if you had a goal of something that you were trying to get done, like for an episode or whatever? How long would that uh, take to 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 get done? Oh, uh, it varies, of course, location by location. If we're doing something more domestic, or like a Mexico or Canada, we usually stay about seven eight days total hopefully get like two maybe four episodes out of it when we go somewhere more abroad like uh africa or somewhere in europe or asia or whatever we we're gonna spend like 12 days on location to really maximize our time and effort for getting our butts over there so it it varies but we usually no more than two weeks is about the longest we'll go on a production okay now you said that uh, when your dad first started, this was something that he did for like a college thing. Did the college pretty much uh, sponsor his, his like early adventures as far as like the financial part of it, or or was he able to come up with the money himself just to start doing this type of route? Yeah, he started as a college project. He was a mass com major at Southeast Missouri State University. Okay, I don't think as far as financing, it was anything other than you can use our cameras take him on location and make something happen and he made it as a project and it was going pretty good and he thought this was something he could actually do and he ended up getting an air and on the local station and then just grew and grew from there man because i would imagine that it, you know it would cost a lot especially lately you know to, to to travel as much as you guys have done uh you know it's not free obviously but you know to to be able to get a, you know some type of grant or some type of Funding that doesn't have to come out of your own pocket, I'm sure, is a is a blessing. For sure. Um, I mean, not, nothing's free in life, as we know. But uh, really, the way we operate is we work on a trade-based scenario with these outfitters or charter boats or whatever the situation may be. They'll they'll cover the lodging and the hunting, and we'll cover the tickets to get ourselves there. And then, obviously, I'm covering the, the post-production cost, too, which is really 
when you break it all down, the post production is about seventy percent of the whole ordeal. So it's pretty oh. good win win scenario. We come there, they take care of us. We put them out on blast, promoting every time an episode airs, and we just roll the red carpet out for each other. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's a, that's amazing because I always kind of wonder like the the whole experience of, of just like uh, picking uh, where or, or deciding where you want to go first of all and what type of content you want to create and whatever as far as like what 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 you're looking for because every area that you've been to offers something a little bit different than than the others and i've seen like you guys go to freaking zimbabwe and 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 all all over and, and greenland and iceland and all that stuff and i'm just like man I, it just makes me uh wish i would travel more you know <laughs> yeah i can understand that yeah well hopefully I think part of the reason fans have connected with us is a lot of them can kind of live vicariously through us and our adventures. And I'm trying sure. to trying to keep that going and hopefully entertain them at the same time. I'm entertained when I'm out there, so I'm just hoping it translates to you all back at home. Well, it seems like it because, uh, you know, now that you're you're taking over, I mean, what uh, I mean, without giving too much away, what uh, can fans uh, expect out of you? Since you're uh, the, they can expect, new they expect uh, a lot of awesome more adventures i've got like i said i've got 2024 all booked up i'm already starting to schedule some things for 25 but um i'm actually going to canada on my next trip going to hunt some bear in british columbia i got ufc legend matt brown who's going to join me actually so he'll be my first official celebrity guest which will be fun and i got uh hopefully return to africa later in the fall tanzania and i'm going to japan later this year too so that'll be a whole new experience for the outdoors program. We've yeah. Never done it before. That's, that's that's interesting because uh, you you mentioned about the UFC and, and uh, I had to bring it up because well I mean you brought it up but I'm I'm going to ask you about that because mm -hmm. I I know it's on your profile anyway it says that you you work uh, for the UFC so what what is it that you actually do? Oh no I don't I don't work for the UFC I'm a I'm an MMA fighter though professional MMA fighter I'm oh. not in the I'm not in the UFC level league. I wish I was that good, but well, then I must have read it wrong then because I thought it said UFC unless it was MMA. Maybe, maybe that's what it said. Probably, probably MMA. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, UFC is like the NFL for MMA. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. A professional fighter in MMA sport. Okay, I read that wrong. Then I guess Jesus Christ. <laughs> no. Okay, I, I apologize. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Oh, I'm a fighter. I've been doing that for about about. 12 14 years now myself and you know i've always had a big big respect for anyone that gets in the cage at whatever level big level little level it takes a lot to get in there similar to entering the bush with a creature that could put you on the food chain all of a sudden it's a similar <laughs> kind of adrenaline rush well so so how good of a fighter or how good of a fighter are you then i mean when it, when it comes to that because you don't you look more you know right now the way i look at you you don't look like a fighter you know, you, you look more like a hunter. You know, that looks like more, I mean, you look more like your dad as I see you now with your beard and hear your voice. It almost sounds like, like I'm listening to your dad speak, you know, but like, oh. but yeah, how, how, I mean, how, how good of a fighter are you when it comes to that? Oh, uh, I like to think I'm pretty decent. I'm definitely, I got some decent hands. Uh, most of my wins have come by the ground game. Like, so I'll get you down and I'll take this arm and keep it cranking until you either let me tap or snap it. So okay. I'm pretty confident wherever it ends up, but injuries have kept me out of the cage for the last couple of years, but I'm still good. And hopefully I can get back to that at some point too. I'm not ready to walk away from that just yet. You got a pretty good win last record then? Uh, I'm at 500 right now. I'm at five and five as a pro. So okay. I got to get there and get back in that win column. Okay. And I suppose that was also kind of like a passion of yours or more, was it more than a passion than doing the hunting thing or is it kind of 50, 50? When it comes I'd, to say, I'd say about 50, 50, you know, I got done playing football and I wrestled in high school and all that. And I still had that competitive fire in me, you know? So okay. I was already kind of becoming a fan of watching the UFC and other leagues like that. And I just transitioned right to it and started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing, Muay Thai, all that stuff. And I fell in love with it, man. And your mom and dad always, uh, like, really, like, were on, on your side, like, I would say on your side or, like, just, like, uh, never were worried about their little boy, you know, because he can take care of himself, it seems like. Huh? <laughs> well, my, mom, my mom took a little more convincing to get used to at first. She wasn't on board 
bully all the way. But my dad, he was he was gun ho from the beginning. I had gotten him interested in MMA. He grew up a big boxing fan, but I ended up integrating him to the mixed martial arts world, and he he took on it pretty fine. And he was he was my biggest fan for sure. Oh, that's that's good. And I suppose that kind of in a way kind of helped it if people obviously must know the show that do the MMA stuff too, you know, I mean, since it's, it is a popular series. I mean, it's not like it's a, I mean, it gives off that vibe. Like we're, we're watching like a, an old, like mom and pop video show, kind of like, like an old, like public access show, which is still kind of the theme I would say, but, but it, you yeah. know, it's gone so, so global and stuff. It's like, you know, what, what, I mean, what would you call it? I mean, for, for your experiences, I mean, do you think it's still kind of like a public access show or do you think it's bigger than that? I mean, that's ba- essentially how it started. He was like Wayne's World before Wayne's World, <laughs> the old SNL days in movies. But uh, it's definitely, I mean, like I said, we're the largest syndicated outdoors program in the world. We get better numbers than the Outdoor Channel, the Sportsman Channel, whatever those guys do. Those guys are paying for airtime. We don't have to do that. because We already have the distribution established. So I definitely think we've elevated from the public access level. We're, we're global. We're outdoorsmen international. So, so when you do deal with stuff like say in the U.S. here, like when you when you have to like, well, you probably don't like. Well, maybe you had to with the relaunch of the of the brand and everything. Uh, uh, you do you like talk to like? I mean, I don't even know how to ask this question because it's like it's kind of a hard for me to even ask this, but it's like when you have like a station that's interested in in, in airing your show, like what is the process of getting your stuff on the air? If say if you're trying to see if it's a new station that's never had your stuff on the air, uh, what, right. how, how do you do that? Well, for one, you know, we give them the rundown of, uh, you know, the distribution we have. And obviously the show's been on, this is our 39th year on the air. So obviously the fans keep watching us for a reason because people keep renewing with us and running. And it's kind of similar to, like I said, with the outfitters, it's a, it's a bit of a barter or a trade out deal too. When we get these t- stations going, sure. like let's say we have a three minute break, commercial break. Uh-huh. We'll split that with them. Half of it will be commercials that we sell and half of it will be their local. Like if it's the local station in Des Moines, Iowa or something, then they can sell Jim's car lot ads while they run it for their station. Sure, or, sure, sure, sure. So because it's good local, it's you know they want to treat it like local programming, even though it's it's a you know, globally and everything. Because exactly. that's how that's how we did at Black Hills Fox that I remember. Because most of our shows are pretty much all our shows came from the internet. The late you know from when I was there anyway, that was from 2014 till 2018. And every time we get like a a, a show, it, it, we it would download from the servers and everything. And, and with your dad's show, I, I do remember you know like a little bit of that where we would. It would dive it in, you know, here your spots, then there are our spots and everything in this kind of, but it's always yep. interesting to see if other stations do different because you never know. I mean, if that's just your format, then that's just your format. So what's your like biggest uh, uh, market then as far as like, you know, the biggest area that uh, watches you the most that you know, of, or where you get the most numbers? Um, It's hard to keep track. Cause like I said, there's so many, but um, I know <laughs> we're, we're cleared in Dallas. That's obviously a big market. Uh, used to have an LA market, but they're always kind of finicky out west. You know, most some of these these TV programmers they program for what they want to watch, not the people in their area. So some of them get a little biased on the anti hunting stuff. So the bigger cities have a little trouble understanding sometimes. But Dallas, uh, you know, we got St. Louis, we got all the big ones, we got uh, pretty much all Florida's covered. Pretty covered all around the country. There's not too many markets we're not in at this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, because that's just, that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to that, you know. You got to, if you're going to be a show that's had so much success over the last, you know, two, three, four decades, you know, you want to keep that consistency with, you know, make it you know, more, it's more of a public thing than anything because it's like you got to care about your fans because your fans care about you, you know, they're, exactly. and it's shown. And yep. continue to show. Do you ever go to any uh like uh conventions or anything like that and, and uh you know meet meet and greet with fans at all, or is that something that's like you don't really have an interest in at all? I haven't you know, I haven't really done anything like that. I know my dad, he used to do kind of stuff like that every now and then, but it kind of got old and he was just sure. 
selling the show and getting productions going at that point. Sure, sure, sure. Because, you know, sometimes a uh, convention is a good way to kind of, you know, maybe create a new fan base. I mean, there might be a yeah. lot of people that still don't know that you guys exist, even though you've been around for as long as you have. You just never know, you know. That's just, no. uh, that's just the wonders of uh, of the entertainment business when it comes to, to, to that. But uh, so what what can we, uh, I mean, expect kind of the new... Uh, the new season. I mean, it's like it's it's going to be a lot of. You said you have some stuff for you know planned or whatever, but like, is there any episode that really like sparks to you that people are really gonna love this episode? Hopefully, they love them all. That's my plan. But <laughs> well, you know, like, it's like a favorite of since since you are taking over now, since you got the reins. This is like like the big shoes to fill. You know, it's not just like another season. You know, this is a big deal now. A well, I think, uh, like I said, this next upcoming trip, I think that'll be really cool. We haven't done a bear hunt since the S SD days back in the day. So yeah. that'll be cool. A new bear hunt, UFC legend with me. Um, excuse me. I think Japan will really catch some people's interest just because Japan is just such a cool, different, unique place. I think people really enjoy seeing that because we've never done Asia at all on the outdoorsman. So that'll be a brand new territory in general and then africa of course everybody loves the africa stuff so i know they're going to get a kick out of all the stuff we do there oh that's that's amazing well i tell you what max i appreciate uh, you taking some time to, to chat with me and my audience uh i wish you good luck and, and you know it, it's it's uh it's a new it's a new chapter it's a new era it's a new time you know and i think your father will be proud and would be proud of you and everything that you're trying to do well, I do appreciate you having me, Sean, and I appreciate what you said. Uh, I learned from the best, so I know how to pick up this torch, and I'm going to keep it running and hopefully burn it even brighter because that's what he would want. So, And for anybody that uh, wants to know more about you, how can they uh, search for you? Uh, just type in The Outdoorsman with Max McNeely. It's the face on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all the socials. I'm, I'm on there and usually pretty pretty much updating every day, every other week, so. All right. That sounds good. I appreciate you, man. And uh, Godspeed and good luck to you. I appreciate you, Sean. Live large, my friend. All right, man. Bye.